my coach in the fight here, got Stacy with me. Shalom, everybody. What were we talking about, Stay? Um, I had a question for you. Okay. And the question was, um, to, I wanted to know your thoughts about New Age movement, New Age religion, this whole New Age thing. Okay, and I referred you to a video. Mm hmm And asked you to watch that video. Yeah, you referred me to a video about um, seven beliefs, I believe, of the New Age religion, New Age movement, and I was able to listen to it, and I did gather a few, few things about it. Some of the things I was thinking. So what I'm thinking is, is that we'll go down and we'll listen to the different parts of the video, and then we'll let you ask a question based on what he said. Okay, that sounds fine to me. And then we'll see, we'll just go from there. In this video, I'm going to give you seven ways that you can recognize new age spirituality in whoever you may meet and whoever you may know coming up. So, do you have any questions so far? No, um, let's start with number one. Hey, my friend, welcome back to The Beat. My name is Alan Parr. Thank you so much for tuning in. If this is your first time here, it's a pleasure. If you enjoyed this video, consider subscribing. Hit that little bell notification so you won't miss a beat. Okay, so let's say you meet someone, and on the surface, it sounds like they've got a relationship with God. They're saying all the right things, but you're really not so sure. Here are seven things you need to look out for and pay attention to and listen for to discern whether this person is a part of a new age movement. All right, so... All that behind us. So we're ready. Number one. Mm -hmm. He says, spirituality, I'm a very spiritual person. That's number one. Concept of being a spiritual person. So oftentimes, people who are part of a new age movement will say, well, you know what? I'm a very, very spiritual person. But what exactly does that mean? I'm a spiritual person, right? So what you really want to be listening out for is not only do they believe in Jesus Christ, but more importantly, what do they believe about Jesus Christ? And that is going to tell you a whole lot about what that person actually believes and what they subscribe to. Being spiritual could refer to just about anything. As a matter of fact, along these same lines, oftentimes people of a new age spirituality basically kind of trend towards an individual type of faith where they don't really connect with organized religion. They're not really in community and fellowship with other believers. They're not really accountable for other people. It's just more like, you know what, I've got this relationship with God. It's just between he and I, or sometimes they may not even refer to God as a he. I'm coming up to that in just a second. But you want to look out for people who are pretty much detached from the church, and they just say they have their own spiritual relationship with God or a higher power, which I'm going to speak about in just a second. All right. So, number one, what you got? Well, I'm sitting here listening to him, and I'm like, uh, okay. Because, you know, in the Third Testament book of the Bible, it sort of tells us, or it makes me think from my reading, that we actually do want to be a spiritual person. So, that's check for me. And then, number two, I'm like, uh, aren't we supposed to be detaching ourselves from the church? Okay, so, check. That's number two for me. And then, I'm like, uh, you know, there, we aren't around a whole lot of people. So I'm like, check number three, you know, am I about to become a new age person or whatever? So well, wh what is he saying? Are we supposed to be spiritual? Because I thought that was the aim, that was the goal, that was what we're supposed to be doing. Yeah. So as we talked about once before, a lot of times we talked about this, how each of the different religions or the spiritualist groups will have a bit and a bit of truth. They all have some truth in it. And so if what he says is true here about the New Agers, yeah. But the thing is, all that's saying is that they are in agreement with the Third Testament. That ain't saying that the Third Testament is in agreement with them. You got to understand the New Age movement developed in the 1970s. This book was written in the 1880s. So they could, somebody could have very well have maybe seen a copy of this book. But what we learned in the Third Testament, you don't necessarily have to have this book to get these understandings. They could have gotten them through, what's the word, inspiration, mm -hmm. and then started an organization based on that.
Okay. So I say ain't no problem with that. Number seven, you know. I, number I, one. Number one. I'm fine with number one. Let's see what the number two. Are you? Yeah, I'm fine with number one as well. And one is absolutely huge, and that is oftentimes people from new age movements subscribe to what is called relative truth. And this is the idea that, you know what, what's true for me doesn't have to necessarily be true for you. Because you have your truth, I have my truth, that person down the street has their truth, and who am I to judge whether your truth is really truth and my truth? You know what? We all, the truth is relative. There is no such thing as absolute truth. An example of this might be, as a heterosexual man, I believe that marriage should be reserved and uh, is defined by the relationship between one man and one woman. But if you are of a new age movement, you may say, you know what? That's cool. That's your truth. That's what works for you. That's what makes you happy. And, but for me... My truth may be something different because it makes me happy. And as long as what I'm doing does not bring pain or hurt anyone else, then you know what? It's fine because it's my truth. You have your truth. I have my truth. And so they basically reject any sort of absolute moral truth. It's basically the idea. I won't judge you. And so therefore you shouldn't judge me. But the Okay. Now. So what about that one? What about number two? Well, number two it. When he first said it, it, I'm like, okay, you know. Relative truth. But then I started thinking, well, we base our truth upon scripture. Yeah. Our truth is not based upon, you know, if you believe that's okay, you know, that's good for you. You know, that's your truth. We don't base our truth upon that. We base all our truth upon scripture. Yeah. And so, and that's a hard and fast truth. There is no... Wiggle room. The people we try to create wiggle room, but that wiggle room only is lasts as long as we get a proper understanding of what the text is saying, and then we find out that you know there is no room. There's a, only a straight and a narrow path. So, and this one sounds like you're in disagreement. You I'm, don't... Just, I'm in disagreement with. with uh... Relative truth, yes. You don't, know, so if I, somebody asks you, was you a new ager, if for the second belief given here in this video, you would not be a new ager because you don't believe in relative truth. I would have to check that one off and say, no, I do not believe in relative truth. So you, 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 won, you won for two now. You one for two. 50 50. Mm -hmm. All right, let's see what else he says here. Okay, the third thing that you want to look out for is how they describe God, if they even believe in God at all. Okay, so now this time is talking about how they describe God, how they're talking about him. Yeah, I think he's going on to say how, you know, God is described as it. You know, maybe some describe it as she or goddess or, you know, stuff like that. I think that has to do with the New Age uh, movement. But we do not describe God as it. We describe him as father, um, sometimes creator, but never as it. Now, let's see. Let's see what he says. If they even believe in God at all. And so oftentimes people from a new age movement or new age spirituality essentially will say that, you know, I know there is a higher power out there or there's a higher force or there's something beyond me or a higher consciousness or whatnot. And oftentimes they refer to God in all sorts of different ways other than just simply calling him God. Matter of fact, they'll even refer to God as an it rather than a he. And then basically what's happening is they know that there's something spiritual or supernatural going on, but they're very hesitant to ascribe that to God, and so they just refer to the unknown as simply a higher power. Well, the problem I have with it is he keeps using the word God. They won't refer to him as God. Well, what if you try to call him by a more proper name? Yeah, I was having a problem with that, too. You know, just because, you know, I don't call uh, the Father God does not necessarily mean I don't believe him. I mean, people just don't call him God. I mean, anybody with I mean the word God is so general it's not really a name it's a title mm -hmm. and so when a person comes into that understanding what do they do next as far as uh, what they're going to call him you know right. they have to be further educated on what they are supposed to call him but they know that God ain't right right so what we say on that one 
Uh, sound like you're going, I'm, I'm going to put you down as going with the uh, New Agers on that one because you're in agreement. They ain't got to be called God. They can be called something else. I don't think it can be called it or I don't know. I'm not going to be checked up off that one. With you sometimes agers. refer to God as it. I, I might be speaking hypothetically, but you, when you refer to the Holy Spirit, you ever called the Holy Spirit it? Yeah. Well, then you have referred to our Heavenly Father as it. Yeah. Yeah, so, and like I said, you have to be educated on that, and, you know, maybe they only got a partial understanding of, you know, and that's the, the word God ain't it. When you call in God, don't nobody know who you're talking about. Right. You could be talking about any God. Yeah. All right, let's go on. Next one is a very interesting one, and I'm just going to call this one energy, comma, vibes, comma, et cetera. And so, oftentimes, when you meet someone who is at a new age spirituality... You'll often hear them say, hey, uh, you know, I'm going to send good energy your way or I'm sending good vibes your way. And so this comes from the idea that our bodies radiate some sort of energy field and we're able to give off a certain type or level or amount of energy. Now, this one is very, very interesting to me. I don't quite understand it because how can you send someone good vibes? I know it sounds good. And, and that's one of the cliches that seem to be circulating around this New Age movement. But somebody needs to explain to me, how do you physically, actually, tangibly, practically send someone Good vibe. Do you send it? All right. Well, think about this. We'll let him finish in. Finish. We'll let him finish making a fool out of himself here in a second. But <laughs> okay. So with this one, my mind immediately goes back, goes to Third Testament, where it talks about how you can send thoughts. Mm -hmm. And so I'm like, uh, you know what? We got one. We got three. And it looks like we're about to get four. Uh oh, we might be New Agers. No, no, uh -uh. <laughs> no, no. Uh -uh. The thing is, we ain't finished yet. We, we ain't finished yet. So the score is three to one now, because you you saying that you're in agreement with this one. I am in agreement with. I mean, you know, I know you have to expound on it some, and you know, he's just taking this one point about it, but. You know, thoughts. And I truly believe that you can, because I've seen it, I've done it. Sit there and think bad about somebody and then, you know, they have a bad attitude. You go up there to them and, and you know, so you, I believe you didn't, in this. You one. didn't think of a bad attitude up on somebody else. They yeah. don't even know about it. They, they were minding their own business. And, and then you, you talk to them, they're like, well, I've had a bad day or something just ain't been going right or, or you know. I believe that. Wait a minute. I need to let me finish there. So ahead. <laughs> they, they was in a, a neutral mood at the worst. They was probably in a good mood. But and you started having bad thoughts against them and changed their day so that when you happen to see them later on that day, they was in a bad mood. Mm. So, yeah, I, I believe that. What do you think? Yeah, we definitely have the power to, to um, share good vibrations from one being to another even when we're not in close proximity i mean we it, it, it's, it works through prayer um but it also works through simply having good thoughts like you said the, you didn't pray something bad to happen to that person you simply had bad thoughts about that person and they felt those negative vibrations well i say that to say that sure if we want to be an intercessor for our loved one we will do a prayer to our father for that person's benefit but simply having good thoughts toward that person also works to their good too helps them it's simply by thinking good makes them go good makes things go good for them yeah those thoughts are powerful so i don't i don't know about that one i don't know and then let's see let's go on through an email? Do you send it through a phone call? Like, and, and what happens when another person receives those good vibes, right? How do you send good energy to someone? See, if you're a believer, that's very simple. You can go to God and you can pray and say, God, would you act on behalf of this person? And in doing so, you are, are interceding for that person in hopes of, that God will actually act on their behalf. But if you don't believe in any of that, what does it actually mean to send someone good vibes? Once again, this is... Okay, so to answer his question, like we said, it's simply just thinking about them. And he mentioned praying for him, and that's probably more effective. But having good thoughts towards the person, especially when you think about it, is opposite of having bad thoughts towards the person. That's right. yeah, that's what's really powerful is when you otherwise 
may feel justified in having negative thoughts toward a person for a particular act or whatever, but you instead send them good thoughts goes a long way to help that person and yourself as well. So you do it through thoughts and prayers. It's an attempt to reject the supernatural and put the power back in the hands of individuals. The fifth thing that you want to look out for when you're talking to someone to see if they're a part of new age spirituality or not is, do they subscribe to this idea of being inclusive? And what I mean here is, oftentimes new age, uh, people who are part of the new age movement, reject monotheism, basically that there is only one God or there's only one way to get to God, right? So if you hear someone saying, well, you know what, I just don't believe that there's only one way or one religion or one person you have to follow to get to God. I believe there's many ways. I believe that, uh, you know, uh, Muslims can get to heaven by believing in their God. I believe Christians can get to heaven by believing in their God. I believe I can get to heaven by believing what I believe. You know, I don't necessarily believe that there's really one way. Oftentimes, that means that person is a part of a New Age movement. This is one of the reasons why Oprah Winfrey has caught so much slack from Christians because she believes in this idea of multiple ways, there are multiple ways to get to God. And this is something that the Bible consistently condemns again and again because the Bible is very clear that there is only one way to get to heaven, and it is through the Son. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one can come to the Father but through me. The sixth thing... All right. Well, he's talking about two different things. Yeah, First of all, he talks about uh, there's only one way to get to the Father, which we all believe, mm -hmm. you know, through Yahshua. And then he goes on to say, well, the Muslims have their, they believe that their God, the other religions have their God. And I believe that just like Christians call Yeshua Jesus the Muslims call him Allah I think it's the same thing I mean I, he's talking about two different things what is he talking about mm -hmm. he's not making any sense there well the thing well one of the things he's trying to say is and is how in order to get to heaven there's really well, the way we understand it, there's really only one way to get to heaven. And that way is through Jesus. But, and since the other religions don't have, quote, Jesus, then they don't have a chance to go to heaven. But the point that he's missing is what is Jesus? You know, Jesus is not a name. Jesus is not a, a, a cross. Jesus is not a, um, a, a material thing. Jesus is a spiritual thing. And like we learned in Herman's class, you have to take on the name of those virtues in order to take on the name of Christ. And so it boils down to it. It really don't matter what religion you are in or what you call him. Like you said, you can still take on those virtues that are right. required to make it into the kingdom of heaven. Right. You don't have to call him Jesus. Jesus is a made up name anyway. They have their word for it. We have our word for it. Hmm. He's talking about two different things. But I think what it, the, the point he's trying to make as far as the New Ages is they don't really believe in a, the Father. They believe that it's, you know, just... Well, I, I, I guess they believe that it's just one, one entity or something like that. Yeah. Well, that's actually correct too then. It is actually just one being, no matter what you call it, no matter what religion it is, it don't really matter. Because I've studied the Sikhs, the Buddhists, the Janus, I think it's called, the uh, Hindus, and a couple of them, I watched a couple few videos on them, and they all are saying the same thing. They all have a different set of rules that they have to go by, live their life by, and if they get those rules correct, they will... Um, go through some sort of enlightenment before eventually they will ever, you know, go back to being with the father himself going back. And they don't call him father. You know, they call him by different names, but this supreme being, they all end up back in with him. No, uh, -oh, you starting to sound like a new age. You just said enlightenment and supreme being. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah, well, I couldn't call him something else. I really yeah. couldn't call him God. You know, I can't call him Father because they don't they don't call him Father. They 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 don't you know you can't call him 
you know, the most high fits under would fit under the uh, new age definition too, calling them, you know, the most high, whatever. But yeah. So what do you call them? You know, well, I try to call them what they call them. I think he's <laughs> a supreme being. But um, so what is that? Does, what, so what's the score? Which, which one does that go with? Um, new age. That's four to one now. Oh my goodness, we ain't got too many more in this. Thing. <laughs> No, I don't think we. I don't think we. I don't think we. We got that because he was saying something. Let's see. Let's back him up for just a little bit. Age movement. This is one of the reasons why Oprah Winfrey has caught so much slack from Christians because she believes in this idea of multiple ways. There are multiple ways to get to God. No, no. I right, said no. Right. right no. Right. Because we yeah. may call them by different names, but, but there's only one. yeah, there's really only one. There is only one way. So, three to two. Three to two. We're easing back over to the other side. <laughs> I wonder why New Age says such a bad name. Don't nobody want to even condemns again and again because the Bible re- be recognized that there is only one way to get to heaven, and it is through the Son. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one can come to the Father but through me. The sixth thing that you want to look out for is if this person starts talking about something called the law of attraction, or some people refer to it as karma, but as I said in another video, we're not even using the idea of karma correctly, because karma has the idea that if you do something good or bad in this life, then when you're reincarnated in the next life, then those things will uh, help you in terms of the state that you return to. But oftentimes people don't really understand the idea of karma, so they just use it and say, oh, well, you know what, uh, the reason why you're getting good things happen to you now in this life is because you have good karma, or you did something good, and so Therefore, good things will happen to you. Or, you know what, man, the reason why that's happening to you now is because you did something bad five years ago, so now bad karma is catching up to you. And so when they start talking about, uh, you know, if I do good things and good things will come to me, or if I say good things, or if I believe a certain way, or if I speak certain things, self-talk, positive talk, then good things will happen to me. My friend, that is a sign that they are part of a new age movement, and you need to distance yourself if you're going to get in a relationship with them. But if you're trying to witness to them, obviously you need to continue to share the truth with them. In the lap. All right, so what about that one? Well, with that one as well, seems like he's talking about two different things because I definitely believe this, you know, about uh, if using the word karma in the correct way, as he said, I believe that's true, you know, because if you do bad things to people and we know we do believe in the reincarnation, you know, you're going to have to pay for that stuff. Mm-hmm. See, he tried to separate the two. He said the proper belief is that when you do something in this lifetime, the karma will have an effect on you in the next lifetime. He said that is the proper belief. That's what he believes. But what the New Agers believe is that what you do in this lifetime will affect you in this lifetime. Okay, I don't, I don't necessarily believe that. You don't? I believe that that it is to a sink, but I. Uh, I believe that it's the next lifetime as well. I think it's both. I mean, yeah. you know, because the scripture tells what you, you know, what you sow, you shall reap. I mean, that's here. That's tomorrow. That can be today. That can be 30 seconds from now. Or it could be when I, when I die or two or three years from now. Mm-hmm. So what the heck is he talking about? Well, no, it's definitely both. It's definitely both. See, the way, the way it would work is you are steadily doing stuff that you now have to repay. But in this lifetime, you're given the opportunity to make up for your mistakes, to to um, to have this so-called karma to come on you and actually have an effect on you in this lifetime. But if you somehow don't make up for every wrong that you have done in this lifetime and even the previous lifetimes, then you have that to deal with in the next lifetime because you going to make it up, period. You can either make it up this one yeah. You can imagine the first souls that came down here and, you know, with no stains on them whatsoever, they would do something that was in error. But, you know, a year later or, you know, some time passed and, you know, something bad would happen to them. Mm-hmm. Well, if they were committing, which they were committing so much bad and not doing enough good to make up for it, then it gets pushed along mm-hmm. to where now... Mm-hmm. We are in Judgment Day. We are the ones with the most stains on our spirit. That's right. why we are headed into this tribulation. So could it be that it's just the word karma? But, you know, just because somebody uses a word, going back to, you know, they say Allah, we say Jesus. 
Just because it's a different word, does that mean it's bad? You know? Yeah. Uh, well. We say, they say karma. We say what you sow, you shall reap. You know, something like that. Yeah, what goes around comes around. Yeah, what yeah. goes around comes around. So, I don't know. So, I, I'm counting us with the new ages on that one. Uh-oh. Yeah. We so, got a couple more. For the, we got one more. It's four to two. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. All right, we'll go. This one is a very, very simple one to spot, and that's this idea of mysticism. So if you are talking to someone, and they start talking about this idea of channeling, which is the idea that you can kind of call up evil, uh, uh, dead people or whatnot and actually have conversations with them through a medium or something like that, or tarot cards, or psychics, or astrology, or out-of-body experiences, or they're really, really into this horoscope thing where they're looking at the different signs, that your sign versus my sign, and trying to figure out what you're going to do based on your sign. All of that is an example of new age spirituality. And one... All right. So, what do you say so far? I'm going to let you talk about that one. I do not believe in the tarot cards, the, the crystals, the, all that other uh, horoscope, zodiacs, and astrology, and all that other stuff. You know, I know that the stars, you know, they're, they're, the, the Bible speaks to the stars and all of that kind of stuff. But, you know, I don't believe that those things can tell the future, per se. Um, I know that you know, the, the, the times and seasons are written in the, 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 the stars and all that other stuff. But from what he's talking about, not getting so deep with it, I, I, I don't think so. But, you know, what about this thing about channeling? I'm going to let you speak on channeling and out-of-body experience. Well, if the way he said it, you know, we would have to reject that one because he's talking about using other means in order to talk to entities in the spirit world. He talked about uh, mediums and he talked to, did he talk about tarot cards mm -hmm. and material? Th so if that's what they believe, they if they believe in using some other type of material co to connect with the father or any being in the spirit world, then we are in rejection with that one. So I say we are four to three. But the thing is, you know, we do have the opportunity to communicate with those in the spirit world, including dead people. The the difference and the one thing that you need to grasp on to really quickly is that we do so directly. There is no median involved. There's no extra, you know, material things involved. It's just a straight up closing your eyes and focusing your thoughts towards that person that is no longer here with us. I'm thinking about Saul when he went to the medium to bring up Samuel. And mm -hmm. the father, you know, that was forbidden. So, you know, I think that that's what he's talking about. So, yeah, we don't, we don't, you know, we don't believe in all that kind of divination and all that kind of stuff. But the Third Testament talks, talks about how, you know, you can... Talk or communicate, I'm going to say talk, communicate with those that have passed on in the spirit world. Yeah, but the thing is that the communication is limited. You know, we do have the ability to communicate, but you got to understand it is primarily a one-way conversation. Right. Mm -hmm. We can send to them and they can feel our communication with them. They can maybe even understand it, decipher what we're saying. The problem is... We can't receive back from them. We mm -hmm. can't hear back from them. We may feel a good vibration come, you know, back. But that's that's the extent of it. Who can read a vibration? You know what I mean? So, but I still say, no, we're in disagreement with that. Hey, so, I agree. So, but we're still four out of ten. So, that you say making new ages, more, you got more uh, with than against. And this guy... He, he, he's not in favor of the New Ages. That's one of the problems with this kind of study. You know, yeah. it's because he's talking against them or whatever. So, yeah. I don't know. You hear somebody from the New Age and, you know, they, they might have a, they might say, no, we don't really believe that. We believe like this. Yeah, you hear hear them saying they, they can further explain it because he's probably haven't talked to anybody. He's probably just getting his video from somebody else or something like that. Uh, and I'm sure that they will have a different say so about what they think, feel, and believe. So well, he's showing himself and the image with his sitting in front of his computer. So he's probably on Google, 
looking up some documents on the New Agers and this he put together a list of seven. He did better than I did. I actually tried to do the same thing and I couldn't find any positive groups that talked about him. I found, you know, a few negative, a lot of negative groups, but you know, I think you get a better understanding if you hear it from them. Yeah, well, maybe he, he, he went to, you know, New Ager's site and and got the information that they, you know, summed it up. So, I don't know. All I know is that, yes, I believe in Yeshua HaMashiach. I believe in uh, the Father. You know, I think that there's different names that, that people call him. I believe that the truth is the word. Um the manuscript that he left down here for us. Um, so I don't really call, care what people call me. You mm -hmm. know, it really doesn't bother me. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. just another name. Just another name, yeah. Well, the way I feel about it is that the New Ages are actually onto something. You know, just like every other religion and spiritualist group in this world, our Father has given them a bit of truth. And I believe a lot of some of those truths are talked about here like this this karma thing i don't know i think they i think they have some truth in their organization right. that needs to be explored we shouldn't just blow them off and say that they're new age and just because we don't understand it and just because we disagree with it or we've been taught that it's wrong does not necessarily mean that everything that they're saying is wrong i mean look at the christian faith who are who are christians who are we to say that they're wrong? I mean, my goodness, 90% of the stuff that we do, or Christians do, are, is wrong. Based on they don't even want to do the law. So, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah. No, but, we got, but we, just like every other group, we have a bit of truth. Right. Everybody has some truth. So we'll dig into Christian faith and we'll pull out our truth. We'll pull out the New Ages truth. We'll pull out what the Sikhs is talking about. They got some truth over there. The Buddhists got some stuff mm -hmm. they know about. The Hindus, you know, they, they got some understandings of some stuff. And, you know, we'll pull it all out and we'll put it in a mixing pot. And recognizing that our father, the creator of the youth that created the heaven and the earth is the, you know, he, he's it. He's, he's no bigger than him. And we're all recognizing that and taking on the name of Christ, the true name of Christ, you know, the virtues and living the way he lived, um, we will make it. We'll make it to the kingdom of heaven. You know, we'll make it to this new age because that's the, that's the crux of it. It is actually a new age. We are already in the new age. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Think about that. Everybody frowned upon the new ages. Well, welcome to the new age. We're we actually living in it. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm glad that we had this class because I learned a lot. And, you know, it makes me not so uh, look so down on something that I didn't understand because I was like, don't call me that. You know, no. I ain't no new age or whatever, mm -hmm. you know. But, you know, they from just doing listening to his little seven list you know i agree with some of the things that so so instead of instead about. of saying hey no i ain't a new ager it's like when somebody calls you a christian right you know mm -hmm. well yeah i'm a christian you know well and then start getting down into the details well you believe this you believe that you believe that well you know no you know i don't believe everything that the entire christian faith believes but, you know, when it boils down to it, you know, my faith is in Christ. My right. Faith, yeah, right, I'm, right, right. And so, uh, by definition, I am a Christian. All right. So, with that, I guess we're going to wrap it up. I guess the answer is no, we're not New Agers. No, we're not New Agers, but we believe in some of the things that they, they're, they're talking about. Well, put it like this. We're not New Agers, but they believe in some of the stuff that we Believe, believe because, yeah, yeah, because our stuff is coming from the scripture, yeah. So they believe some of the stuff that lines up with the scripture, and I ain't got no problem with that. I ain't got no. I'm ain't glad. No I'm glad they either. do too. You know what I'm saying? Let's let's get the other three things right, and you know, maybe we can make the best out of it. All right, guys, we're going to go ahead and shut it down there. Shalom, shalom.